side, and definitely some of the control mages don't seem to fit their current style. Well, they banned out two of the more tanky guys on the rift. Will it be a third? No, it will be Ezreal actually taken away from depth this time around. We saw Nuclear on that pick actually picked up his fourth loss, zero and four on the Ezreal for now. That's more of a, a feeling of their current or their most recent games, I should say, rather than his play on the pick. But this time around, he will pick up a Lucian, potentially. Should be pretty happy about that. Definitely a series where Kaiser priority was likely to be quite high, given that it's a fallback for Nuclear as well. But Lucian obviously is the permanent lane bully. And also with that nice trading matchup early into Deft, if he does run the Kaiser, means that Lucian first pick makes a lot of sense. This is very high priority for Rascal on the Jace, but this is because it's a takeaway from Noggery, because it's kind of his ultra comfort pick in the Jace that you can take first round and feel good about. It's also an old pawn champion, so we'll wait and see on that particular one. And the Brom also has risen in priority. So Brom Kaiser, I think, is what they're going to run. But they take away the Brom to stop the old lane-busting duo yeah. of Lucian Brom just being a blue side lock-in for Damwa. Take the Jace to can flex that around a little bit, but could definitely just head up to the top side for Rascal. That's where you would expect it the most. And how about an Alistair returning to the rift here up against the Brom in the bottom side? Definitely adds already a nice amount of engage to their composition. Notably not a Rakan in this spot. With the Rakan changes, we saw a win from Tucson, a loss from Hoyt, and no one else has dared to give it a go. But seeing Lissandra first round be locked in, probably for Showmaker, uh, definitely is more of a mid lane champion, and surprise, it will not be a Kai'Sa after all. I wonder if this means something about the jungle matchup, because we're gonna see Ash locked in on side of King's Zone. We've seen a couple of players go to the Ash, so it's not necessarily a surprise pick, but with Kai'Sa open, they decide to go for something that lanes a bit stronger in Dilution because of the range advantage. You can trim the wave and also poke them a bit with the volley and also empowers the jungle. So Kuz probably the biggest benefactor, but it's Death saying, I'm not willing to kind of abandon laning phase against Nuclear and Hoyt and scale purely on the Kai'Sa alongside. I'm going to go with Ash and try to fight a little bit earlier. Like that idea. You know, you know that you're giving away the Lucian and you very much expect it up against Dom 1, so you would have had to have something prepared for that matchup. Being a little bit proactive about it in your picks, I will never complain about that. So I do like it. Notice the Jack spam after Cuz did make a bit of a mistake, but that didn't really uh, go against the way he was playing the Jacks. I thought it was quite decent. Uh, not amazing, but very good. I would say, but they do ban away comfort here from Cuz. The Nocturne ban, though, with Ash locked in is interesting just because Ash is kind of a compositional answer to Nocturne, the ability to hawk shot the camps and get a lot of information on the pathing. Meal priority has been lower so far this week, but I'm sure when Sandbox takes to the rift, every time it will be accounted for. And we will see Camille from Cuz. These uh, seasoned LCK players playing Camille has not necessarily inspired confidence. Outside chance he's not on the Camille. The flexes can still come in mm -hmm. from King Zone's comp, but definitely the heavy expectation. Certainly is. Things may change as the patches do come along and certain nerfs go towards him. But how about a response in the jungle will be the Zack coming out here for Canyon as was known for being very aggressive and playing stuff like the Kha'Zix, the Nocturne, but now he's going on to a tanky pick like the Zac. Interested to see how this comes along. And it appears bold at first look as there's a look-in that's interesting. Seems like Jarvan is going to be hunting Jace. And by the potential to all huh. in on the pick. Definitely the poke trades are going to be pretty decent for Jace, but Q poke can be an option. So that's probably Nogari's champion, you would imagine in this particular draft. Kings are gonna be thrown off, at least for the first 10 seconds of this final pick. What will they lock in? I think LeBlanc is a perfect Ooh. choice in terms of power levels. And I've kind of been expecting this. The fact that you can go LeBlanc can be pretty emboldened to have decent laning phases. Lissandra's a containment matchup, but I don't feel like it's the winning matchup that some people think that it can be against LeBlanc. Yes, you don't die as much, but pre-six, you definitely can die. Post-six, you get poked out and are on low health for the majority of the laning phase. So if you look at priority here, it actually looks like a 
very risky draft to try to run the Zac. You want Zac with winning lanes, and I can understand a game or a version of game number two where the lanes go well, but I can also see multiple, more than 50%, where well, this could be a struggle for Canyon on the receiving end of quite a lot of pain coming through from King Zone. King Zone's comp feels like you just went into solo queue, you're doing your draft, and this is the enemy team that you're going up against. The really scary one that's got the Smurf LeBlanc and the Camille that's going to gank you three times before level four. So definitely some scary stuff on the side of King Zone this time around. But Dom One bringing in the new picks for not only Nuggery with the, the Jarvan in the top side, but also a new one here for Canyon on the Zack. Good news. The only way this Jarvan works is full AD. So it's almost certainly with the player we're talking about going to be full AD Jarvan. Diving in, trying to delete people. And you know what? Ash can do very little against Prince Jarvan the sure. fourth when he goes AD build because EQR does basically her entire health bar. However, his entire health bar in lane versus Jace is going to be a struggle. He's going to be taking it in lane, as he did point out before, but we are ready, guys. Interesting comps. Hit the rift here for game number two. There we go. We were missing you guys in the first game as King Zone's chant, and that one was non-existent. This time around, though, they are here. So nice to see that, especially after they're winning game one. And it's a priority draft with Cuz on Camille. Seems like the worst nightmare of Zack player. Speaking of bad nightmares. He's going to get stunned up here. Question is, do they have enough damage to actually kill him or get him to flash? The answer is no. It's going to be all about what King Zone want. And the Zack is going to be on, well, I'd love a Scuttle Crab, Judy. So we'll see. How much of a full court press can be done? He doesn't get a topside jungle. You can see double ward put down and a zombie poro. The ultimate disrespect with the aggressive zombie poro. Think of the jungle clear speed that's going to happen now. Yeah. With, Kaz with 3 AD at level 1. They're invading bot side. Will they get the wall? They do. Oh, just clip the vision there on the trinket ward. And Pawn wants the extra experience for his level 2. Yeah, and you'll notice in game number one, Cuz actually went blue buff to blue buff and ended up three buffing Canyon in game number one with the Jax versus Lee Sin oh, combination. Yeah. But look at this. Now they invade in not only one side, How but two sides. Here it is. Oh, no, Canyon gets that one. Oh. And that one. Come on, Rascal. Where are the Jace mechanics? Not in game two, guys. And he gives up a lot. To make, for him to get no experience there, Cuz is going to have to keep dunking on bot side. Otherwise, the price is going to be well, significant. Speaking of Cuz, he thought he could have his Raptors. The answer is absolutely not. You say that, but that's Cuz's cooldowns down, and it's all going to be about how mid lane goes. So actually, Cuz is playing with fire a little bit. Huh. A lot about mid lane reactions here, and Cuz's cooldown only now gets hooked shut up. Yeah, looks like he's trying to bait him into thinking that he can have the Raptors. The answer is no. Can he smite it? No. <laughs> Issue here, though, Valdez, is you need to continue this pressure because if there's ever a fallback pattern and we just have, remember, experience is nerfed on the jungle right now. So farming up your levels is going to be slower. We're going to be lower levels. Underleveled Camille sucks compared to underleveled Zach. Zach has much less of a requirement. So unless you keep dunking and grow a lead, the fallback pattern of, well, I'll build a Cinder Hulk and jump in and have a passive is going to be powerful. As we look over the laning runes, he actually went Scorched to try to yeah. rip down the health bars. It's the same Keystone that we saw run in Support Jarvan, the Airy, for E-Poke and Q-Poke in the top lane. But in the early laning phase, anything close to CS for CS is a big win for Jarvan. And he got a big win from the enemy top laner entering lane nice and late. Just feels so good for him. He went poke build, as you were mentioning, with the Airy Scorch. And he's having a, a blast up there in the top side. Also went for second wind and the shield bash. Not sure exactly what the name of the shield bash is, but... Shield bash is right, and shield bash is a really interesting one. I was watching uh, Shifter stream uh, mm -hmm. recently, and he... I hold the point. He is a big fan of top lane Jarvan, and he was really espousing W Max shield bash 
uh, Jarvan against Riven, and he dominated that lane, which is a hard lane, of course, for Prince Jarvan the Four. So I don't know if we're actually going to see W Max in this game. Maybe that's too far. But you can actually get some surprisingly good trades out with Shield Bash and just smart use of Jarvan's W. Be excited to see if he actually does go for that. No W Max, but did have the Q Max. I suppose he just wants to poke him out a little bit better up against that Jace whose poke can just be overwhelming at times. Just the sort of thing you don't think about. You know, extra points in W or just yeah. Shield Bash Jarvan because Jarvan's autos hurt a lot, right? He, has, he applies his passive, he has Shred from his Q, and then if you're also taking a Shield Bash proc while the Jarvan is shielded for any amount, it is likely to be an advantageous trade. It's the ranged non-committal trades where ranged attack or hits you and the melee champions like crap, you know, what can I do? And also running down the mana bar of the Jarvan where things go good and it's probably why you have to go sorcery here just to try to have different things, have different ways to attack this lane. It's later where Jarvan can actually pull out the Oli. Excited to see it in the hands of Nuggery specifically. I mean, we were talking about how this guy is mechanically a very much gifted player, but has, you know, some struggles with making sure he doesn't die in a side lane and stuff like that, but already having a little bit of help from his friend Zach. Unfortunately, that gank did get spotted. Zach got no big buffs in this game as well, so he is really behind in experience. Cuz has been able to make his life annoying, but Zach wants to farm. Zach's just about getting experience, and the fact that it's level four to level four, and Cuz isn't wielding any of his advantage onto successful ganks, means there is still a real chance that all the best laid plans of King's Own Dragon Axe come to nothing. See the mid lane there for just a second. Little tip if you're going up against LeBlanc, dodge the chains, as you do not want to get stunned down, electrocute proc, and it's just lose half your health bar. Also, making sure you can proc that Aftershock as Lissandra. Very important, as you can imagine. This time around, Showmaker actually doing pretty well in the mid lane. Actually gets a nice push off there and will be ahead in CS for now. Still a red buff on good old Kaz's. Oh, missed the hookshot. Whoopsie. In the new patch, that won't matter as much. Obviously, you lose out on the damage, but the stun on the Scuttle is actually really relevant so that you do more damage to it, given how the Scuttle's resists work. No CC onto it means scurries around, and again, Cuz is getting a lot of things, but actually needs to make it work somewhere on the map. But now, that's not happening. He picks up a nice amount of XP just passing by the mid lane as well, and is going to be spotted on multiple wards as he comes in, but he doesn't seem to care as it's all about denying the Zac in this game, he says. As he'll leave the lanes alone for now and continue to attack these buffs, he'll have the enemy red buff once again. Well, we already have buffless in the LCK lore, and, uh, you know, Canyon is not picking up too many buffs, so we'll see when that does finally change. I think with buffless, it was something like seven or eight in a row, and that's yeah. pretty hard to set up. Speaking of buffless, the Drake is also being started on the bot side, and Canyon will be spotted. Nice ward put down in the pixel brush means that the Raptor Camp attack here is under the nose of Pawn. No, you can't have the Raptors on either side of the map. I think he took them the first time around, but the only camp that's actually yours, Canyon, is the Wolves. Tracking of Canyon should be pretty extended, but Pawn knows he should be topside. What will Canyon do here? He'll just take the Raptors. Okay, finally he's going to get some Raptors on this side once again. Struggling to hit level six, cuz also not level six just yet. If you're unsure why he went for that camp instead of the ultra safe wolves, it's because wolves is always going to be Zax when Camille's on the bottom side of the map. The moment that Camille could realistically back from the Drake by and get to top side, he never gets to go back to Raptors. So it's purely about, I want as many camps as possible. This is a one time offer on some Raptors, and that's why it all ends to pick it up before realistically cuz could be. Yeah. Cool items here from Nogri as well. He continues his poke. He doesn't really care about damage items for himself just yet. Just wants to say, I will win the trades by having Jace do a lot less damage to me with the Ninja Talk. Started with those Ninja Talk. Again, I, my read is you have to go full AD this game because it works in the mid game and top side. It works in team fights yeah. against Ash. 
Sunfire Cape was buffed, so there is a world where somehow that item comes up. I really can't expect it, given Noggery. And just the only time we've seen Jarvan in the top lane, I was a little bit, we've seen it Rift Rivals, Smev played it over at Rift Rivals last year against Rumble. It can be a very strong lane counter. Turns on earlier against Rumble, but still works against something like Jace later on. Yeah, gonna be excited to see how his build path comes along. See, once again, the trades here. He's taken a bit less damage because of that. I believe this is the fourth Scuttle Crab that does go the way of Cuz. Might even be number five, but either way, we do know that he's taken everyone on the map, and that's what's really important here. So far, all of that is with a gold lead for Dam one game. <laughs> the buff claimed by Showmaker, it's technically not Canyons, but it's close enough, right? It's kind of like a relic shield at this point when you talk about credit on where a blue buff goes. So because of that, the streak is ended by Cuz when it comes to stealing enemy buffs. And because no gold lead has been enacted, Let's think of this game in a different way. Hey, what about if we both show up at 40,000 gold, who do you feel better about? Well, to me, it's the team with the AD Jarvan and the Zac. And right now, we're on course for that, so it means that Dam1 Gaming have not been punished, even though it looks like Zac is having the worst time ever. As long as he can slowly get his tank items and engage into the back line and essentially make Ash a non-problem, he'll be very happy about it, so. Struggle in the early game, but could have some fun here in the mid game as he's looking for depths. But they are going to back away as perhaps Hoyt and Nuclear give away. No reason to take the risk when there's no minions to take. And at level six, he actually can't get behind the duo, so it would have just come up short and looked a bit comical. Cause I thought was going to be aggressive, but no. Going straight to his camp, and now equal levels between the junglers. Nagari pushing up and starting. To steal some raptors of his own feels pretty good about that. I know. It's funny that I was mentioning how those are not canyons, but actually in this game it's not Cuz's, that top side, uh, at least, on those raptors as Nuggery takes his fill this time around. Yeah, this lane is uh, a painful one for Showmaker. He can never on command get Aftershock either, so he ends up having no magic resist apart from Merc Treads on most of the trades. Again, this is where the matchup that one point seemed clear to be a counter, starts to fall apart a bit. I'm sure, Lissandra players around the world have felt the pain of a good block. Yeah, especially after level six. She never has to fully engage for you to, you know, get your combo and ult someone if it's you or her. And she just continues to sit there, poke against you. It doesn't matter how tanky you build. As you saw, it was Merc Treads and the Kindle Gem, but still, eventually, you will have to back. But teleport does make things a little bit easier. Queen Cos is squealing laughter about something. We'll have to ask him about that earlier. Yeah. Uh, later on, Canyon keeps farming and says, well, I'm doing my thing, guys. I'm farming up, and so far I can't argue, and it's actually E second max here from the Jarvan. Of course, was buffed. 5% uh, more attack speed at all times and doubled when the flag is on the rift. That tells you he wants to do some killing because it's more burst damage as well. Definitely is. Here's the first arrow of the game as they do get it onto Showmaker, but Aftershock was procced already. And so that means that no follow-up damage comes in. He's going to be totally fine. Aftershock procking there was very important. About 300 damage more for that to come in. That was uh, not claimed by Nogari. Cuz is down three levels, but he knows he has the pressure from top side, and he is going to force that flash away from Nogari. Getting something. That's the first actual lane involvement from Cuz all game at 12 minutes. Wants to back it up with the Rift Herald. Now that's in vision of a blue ward and a sis ping. So seems like they're not actually going to use multiple members to go there and stop it. As here we go. Okay, Tucson does have his flash. Wants to wait until the last moment. Is going to flash stand beside as Nuggery winning a trade up in the top side. Q. Can he get on top of it? There's the flag, and the Q is going to be flashed away as Rascal, knowing that power, is able to get away with the slide. And is that a tipping point where things only get better and better for Prince Jarvan the fourth? The gank and the bot lane was a bit anemic, and the Rift Herald charge will come. So it's still actually going to lose them. Quite a lot of gold to the Jace. Rascal's happy to have his buddy Cuz and an Ocean Drake, the only prize for Damon Gaming. And not a great one in this, as it looks like potentially this turret is even going to go down. So a ton of gold should go the way of both Rascal and Cuz in the top side. Rascal is low, but he does have the help of his friend to take this one out. 
3.30 extra goal to Cuz, and now Nuggery can't begin to, you know, stay in that lane and bully the chase after this moment where he gets those items as the lane has just become a lot longer. Auto attack cancels, attack speed on the hyperdrive, so easy to crack the turret, but look at this. Damon Gaming will be able to trade. We've not always seen trades with turret plates, but it's important to note turret plates were traded basically equally between the two teams in the top and bot lane. That means the gold lead has not ballooned. It is a gold lead of zero. Let's watch this all in, see if there's any turret shenanigans. There is not. That's just one combo, and the one combo gets bigger and bigger. Rascal himself, frustratingly, has no way to answer, really, in item builds. You can't go for play the Rune King in this matchup. Nogari's actually not going to be building very much health, so you just kind of have to go Yomu's Black Cleaver and lose all in trades. Pretty much. I mean, it was right there on the edge. It was a nice little combo by Nuggery. Wasn't expecting it from Rascal, perhaps. As once you get knocked up, you know you're going to get all, de all in. So, was he able to get out alive with his life? So that's that is something. Both the top laners now do not have their flash. Let's see as Nuggery makes his way to the mid lane if maybe they can make something happen elsewhere on the map. But pings come out, and they know exactly where he is actually as they ping him out there, even without the wards. The pick CC threat, if you're trying to transition between lanes without control vision, is actually supremely high on both teams. We see LeBlanc, Lissandra's mid lane, pick champion. Ash is the pick AD carry of all, right, with the Ash arrow, and it's Camille jungle. So be given all that on both sides. There's so many areas of the map where if you don't have vision, you bring a friend, and you go the longest route possible. Dumb one, trying to play where they're strong, which is around the bot lane that picked up all the plates earlier. They rotate mid lane in. Ash still gonna be very happy to come mid lane, and Hawkshot can give them that vision that perhaps might be dissipating from time to time. But just like a vision battle around Baron really almost tipped the scales entirely to Dumb one when Kaz walked too far, this feels like a game ripe for a mid game pick, really setting the tone. So many champions on both sides, as you mentioned, can make it happen too, which means we're bound for some action. We're bound for a first blood eventually, which by the way, has not happened. And it might be now as in goes Tucson, or rather Hoyt right on top of him. As Tucson gonna be in a lot of trouble here and will go down and Dromaker shows up with the double root as Nuggery going 1v2 on the right side is immediately gonna be punished. But an extra couple of kills in the mid lane to Dom one mean they win the fight. Positioning on both sides all over the place. Deft overextended trying to fight with Tucson. He goes down. Dom one more crucially. They got the numbers lead. They're pushing through mid lane and the full health turret. They're taking basically no specks of dust this entire game. It's gonna get decimated. Down it will go. Couple of kills go to Canyon, who's feeling good after that early game to make this happen. So Tucson has flash. Notice that here. And his flash basically gets him nowhere. Doesn't get any value because the kidnap effect overrides it. Showmaker gets in the back line. Deft overextended because his buddy Tucson was swell. And Jarvan on the flank doesn't get any value. But two's bigger than one. And they have enough damage for the Lucian in the mid lane to bulldoze through that turret and actually grow the first meaningful lead of the game for Damwon, and they're the team with the Zac. Looks like he was even on vision, but still got caught out there. That's the ward spotting Canyon, but that's the power, as maybe Canyon is going to now see the light of some of these tanky and gates junglers, and maybe we'll see more Zac out of someone like Canyon, who's known to be very aggressive, loves to play, his Kha'Zix, Camille, stuff like that. But now, seeing a kind of different pick with the Zac and so much success here in the beginning of this game. And every Zac game goes the same way in mid game when it comes to analysis. It is, can we see the Zac on vision or can we not? If the answer is no, you will lose more than nine out of 10 times because you need that vision. The Zac needs to be conspicuous, especially in a game like this. There's a lot of unknowns. There's outplay, right, from a LeBlanc. Jace can do a lot of cool stuff in a fight. But there's also knowns, which is Zach will get into the fight. It's impossible to stop him. He has his ultimate to always be relevant and cannot be disengaged with any reliability. And also, if Zach and Jarvan press their buttons on Ash, she's not going to be able to put out damage with a Hurricane and a Blade of the Ruined King. She has no escape, and Jarvan's ultimate feasts on a champion like Ash. So because of that, if the vision line falls down, King Zone's options outside of very improbable outplays 
go out the window, and the reliability of down one, taking basically every objective for free, goes way up. Yeah. They would have loved to win an early game and try to just win lane and go through there and try to negate some of the negative parts of their composition loss that you're going over. But so far, Dom1 have been very good in coming back after the Camille, you know, getting in your face the entire time in the jungle. As you mentioned, there wasn't really any big kill or first blood or momentum that she was able to really do there because of the Camille. So it's kind of unfortunate that only has that one kill from the team fight that they kind of got on the side, not even in the 5v5. I think the Invader is a pawn solo mission, but don't think he will pick up that blue. Was claimed by the Sandra. Nogari wants to dunk someone, and I he's got a lot of damage. He just wants to dunk it down. Oh, Deft, you don't have your flash, so you die. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the way it goes, and unfortunately, that's the way it will go for the rest of the game. Solid color casting there. It's the easiest analysis ever. Jarvan presses R <laughs> on no flash as she does. Always the story. In a game like this, unless there's a lot of backup. Speaking of backup, Pawn has to uh, scurry along. And you know what? Rascal's relieved. He doesn't. He knows the enemy doesn't have him. So that feels pretty yeah. good for the the uh, Jason the side lane. Titanic Hydra probably going to be on the way. You could go Ravenous here if you really want to hit the side lane hard, and it is Nogari after all. But Titanic heavily expected. Cause jungling, but the threat level on Nogari is minimal. Yeah, I mean, it is that Jarvan, cause is gonna look around the side, but doesn't even land a some shot. So Nogari's just trying to get as many of the little crugs as he can. Two points E and then maxing W second is Nogari for the pseudo tankiness and definitely in a team fight, you can get away with the dunks. Ooh, that's that chain and will he follow up? Killing Smite and the you rotation know. being on cooldown means that he will get away. Yeah. Thought Pawn would continue, but did see the Lissandra nearby. At least they do get the Smite, not the worst thing in the world. Big item breakpoints coming in. Should be Cinderhulk into Warmogs being done. Not quite. Just the recipe to be done. 400 gold, I believe, on that one. But the Zac, now he can dive in. And he was already having a lot of fun there. Titanic Hydra, almost done. For Nogari, and that's where it might be lights out. The Kings are not impossible. Again, we talk about their outplay potential, and damn, can they shred a Baron real fast. But for now, at least, oh, yeah. no access to that, no map control, and no idea where Zach is. So, seems like King Zone doing their best down one impression, just hitting the side lane and hoping to see a mistake from their enemies. It would be nice to see more Jarvan. I, I love his playmaking ability to make the team fights a little bit more fun. It does cut down a little bit on some of those AD carries that you do see, like the Ash, the Varus, the Jin. But uh, I've been having a lot of fun with him in the jungle. You attack really fast, and you clear camps extremely fast. Saw some pro players even returning to Tiamat on Jungle Jarvan. It's a, an item that uh, a lot of junglers did step away from once the item cost uh, did go up by, I think, 200. Uh, just became a little bit too expensive to work into your build, but... It does make your clear insanely fast so that you can just get so many items on the jungle guard. Yeah, more attack speed at all moments, so the extra AoE is going to proc even more. Chasing on to Pawn, he's in trouble. Just waiting for the hop back, as now all five members of Dumb One are on the way for you, Pawn. He's going to hop all the way back. They're waiting on his oh. clone. And okay, see you later. Held that one for so, so long, and actually, he did go back once again. As play the Come action, on, Paul, it's a great escape if you can do this. I think he might have. Okay, the flash on in as now they're gonna link together, but still it will he be missed it. as uh oh, Pawn playing with the hearts of the Tom One fans and the Tom One players. And it's not trivial about it. It's gonna get so much time for Jace, and there's a Camille shadowing this. If they get the dive here as well. Not only Camille, it's also Deft. It's three on one, and this time around, the Jarvan shouldn't look too good as the Combo is dodged by Cuz going for the ultimate. Kingzone just on one, get dunked it. them. That was awesome stuff from Pawn. He spent so much time going in and out. He deserves the full zoom. Yeah. Really nicely played there. You always want to condemn someone to death when five people have made it their business to take him down. Five people is not enough. I just love the way he held his uh, ultimate to go for the double dash. Only when the full engage, the full commit happened on the bottom side outside of Zack and Alistair. 
What was our analysis of game number one? Horn got out of lane, and he just tried to buy space, just to buy time. He was the grand distraction. Can you be any more of a distraction than Pawn is? I wish we had the timer on the screen, because the Yakety Sax music was playing for the entire time. Yeah. If we were playing it during this, we'd probably have to pay royalties. It was the full 30 seconds and then some. Continues to open up here, respecting abilities like, for example, the Kidnap. Continues to go forward, and how many summoners, ults, and other things are used? And it's Cleanse LeBlanc, much more about the Ruse than an Ignite LeBlanc. Yeah. You take the Cleanse for the Lissandra in the lane, but it ends up being very useful up against Alistair Zack, just to make sure your escape can happen. And now what happens from here? You were mentioning the Baron speed for Domlin Gaming. They'll pick up a Mountain Drake that's going to be very nice for them, but they got to grab a hold of their mental after they just had it torn to pieces by the side of King Zone. And you know, these are the young mechanical solo queue players that were top 10. They had the entire top 10 squad when they were playing in Casper Cup. Of course, now, of course, re everything's resetting and those numbers are not as relevant. What I'm trying to say is, you, you are tilted right now. We're kind of tilted watching this because <laughs> yeah. five people chased after Olabong, didn't get the kill, and they lost to death down bot lane in a turret. So right now, you're feeling sheepish. Egg is literally on your faces right now, and they have to reset, get their control walls down, understand that they still have Ash's flashdown because she used it in that turret dive bot lane. They, and you still have the Zach Jarvan duo that seem ripe to take over this game. Anna Ford's making mistakes. Is, is this one of them? Okay, uh, we're going 1v2. He has his team behind him, but he wasn't expecting Pawn to be there. I would have to give him the benefit of the doubt, but now they are in so much trouble as back he will be knocked as Lissandra, even through the aftershock, is going to go down. It's total decimation to the side of King Zone. Not even close as Cuz himself will even live on the backside, and now they will be the team to turn on to Baron. Well, the mental was turned off a little bit too long, and it gets capitalized on and feasted on by King Zone Dragon Axe. They're going to get a free Baron from this, all because Nogari wanted to get over that wall, and he wanted to get there fast. Unfortunately, that meant EQ on cooldown. He dies instantly, and so does Baron. King Zone Dragon Axe turning around this game. Watch the replay here. There's no one top lane, and he's like, I'll take this, and cause is reading Nogari like a book. That is yeah. a Nogari play. He is the one to say, what's the fastest way to get to a minion wave? And you know what the analysis from Kuz was? The minion wave, look at where it was, right? It's above this position as the fight goes on. It's above this position. It's in that equal point between blue and red side pushing. You know Nogari is gonna say, oh, a minion wave, I can hoover. You're surprised that he comes so quickly, but he was there for the gank with the hook shot into the wall if the minion wave is in the middle. He got all the job done because the EQ was on cooldown and they just kill the damn jar. It's just a mistake. You gotta grab a hold of your mental. You can't just be EQing into the darkness. That's just not something you can do at this point of the game. You have to realize that after the plays that just happened a couple minutes before, that uh, you're behind now and you can't make mistakes like that. And now you got a fed Camille, a fed LeBlanc, and uh, a lot of huge threats on the side of King Zone where you were talking about it compositionally. If both teams didn't make any mistakes, perhaps Domwon would be the victor up against the Ash. But no, no. after this, I mean, what can you really say? And that's why we always kind of preface our analysis in games like this where, given the teams involved, it doesn't always go to script. Again, we said nine out of ten times, Domwon held all the cards. We're seeing the one out of 10 where Dumb One make the big mistakes. Kings don't get the nice capitalization, and Nogari's watching his inhibitor turret go down. And Dumb One, as a squad and in the individuals, I think in all ways, are well off the pace right now, and King Zone taking the maximum. Yeah. You mentioned it before a bunch of extremely skilled young players that still have to. Get a little bit more experience, TP. I'd say. We'll see if they can make anything happen here as TP's coming in. There's only two members of King Zone here as Cuz is going to get away from it, but can he survive? No, the flash comes forward. And the Camille at least will die, but they're spending so much to just try to kill them, and they're losing the whole map. Exactly. Mid lane, out of tar goes down. The inhibitor is going to go down. It's Jace, by the way, and there's no way you're going to get a double kill bot side when it's LeBlanc Camille. Camille already trolled out. 
of the ultimate there. Cataclysm didn't come too cataclysmically. The bot lane inhibitor goes down as well. They lose two inhibitors, and they only kill the Camille that started a lot of these headaches. Well, at least they were able to get the shutdown, is all I can really say, because they haven't really got anything else in their pockets. Is a very unfortunate turn of events here for Dalmon Gaming, but gotta admire Kingzone for having the wherewithal to say, we're struggling in this one, but we can come back. Cataclysm versus all the mobility spells sometimes leads to amusing moments like that. Still gonna go down, but again, this should be a replay of the mini-map and of the minion push in mid. They get yeah. so many objectives from that. Gold lead increases from the side of King's Own Dragon X, and it was a very improbable path to victory. Cuz tried to apply pressure early, but it went way better than expected for Damwon. Remember, Jarvan went CS for CS with the Jace when he had no jungler, because his jungler couldn't get a buff. Yeah. And then Canyon, you know, slowly picked up experience and around level seven was equal. So this was a game ripe for just run at the enemy team and beat them, but through some creative mistakes, you definitely need to fully explain this one. Damwon now find themselves one mistake away from losing 2-0. Well, you mentioned creative mistakes. How about trying to get on into a blue buff yeah. in Vision as Rascal is going to be finally collapsed upon by everything that Damwon have to uh, offer. Well, I think it needs to be more of those because they've lost two inhibitors, but I take your point. I'll put one on the uh, scoreboard there for Damwon Gaming. So he's going to take down Scuttle, continue to open up map control. He wants Elder to spawn, and happy news for King Zone. It's going to come just after 35 minutes. That it will. Feeling really good about this one. I don't really mind the ocean drink. They'll take it, but as you mentioned, Elder will spawn next up as Spooky Ghosts. That's kind of what I call that item now. Um, what is it called? Twin Twin Shadows? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry, Spooky Ghost was kind of always the meme name for yeah. it. So you get, you get both of them. At least I one. have the meme name in my head. It's not quite a package, big package situation that yeah. you've been guilty of in the past. This time you're fine with Spooky Ghost. And you know why this is a great Spooky Ghost game? It's against Dumb One Gaming. They like to go walkabout and it uh, finds people when they go walkabout. So good for split pushing too. You just see people before they even get close. Already LeBlanc is so slippery. But you can slow them down if you want to chase. You can spot them if you're going to be the one chased 5v1. It's just, a, it's just a great item that you can tech into, essentially, when you already do have a nice amount of gold in your pockets. Now, for all our analysis, Zach could talk about this game, but he might just straight up die. Okay, he's going to get the Braum into the back line, but he's super tanky. Palm getting in Cause. there as well. Okay, nice amount of damage from Nuggery into the back line, but now Cuz trying to go 1v2 as well. But he has a Guardian Angel, whereas the Jarvan does not. Meanwhile, the Lucian also goes down in the fight. It's because he's able to take him out, and it looks like King Zone are gonna look for that 2-0 victory. And TP in as well here, is that Deft? I believe it is, he has to flash already. Yeah, they're getting on in there, and not much that Canyon and Hoyt can do. Showmaker struggling to get in range even. Finally, they take on the LeBlanc. Have they gone too far? Lots of low health bars and on the side of King coming Zone, in. They but might it just does do not it matter. They're going to be pushing in for the victory as both Nexus turrets do go down. They're still trying to kill Death. Can they even do that, Thumb One? The answer is going to be no as King Zone win the match 2-0. to zero. An epically frustrating game for Dumb One Gaming. And how did it start? But the trickery of Pawn on the LeBlanc. He bought so much time and from there, the ability to reset your mental after a moment like that is not trivial. And it's to one of our new teams with those hot shot solo queue players. From they there, it, everything was from there. It won't be shown in the gold graph, but that was the moment where they got under the skin of Dumb One Gaming as a five, because it was a five man collapse. Credit to Pawn. It was the greatest illustration of the point I was making. When Pawn can be all you can focus on in the early to mid game, he's so often been surrounded by chargers who can take it over in the late. And on a macro side, they kind of put down one on the hamster wheel, even though it seemed like this would be the game where after a solid early game, down one would force us into a game number three. Yeah, I mean, everything was looking fantastic when you have your Jarvin that, you know, just won a big trade up against Jace in the top side, a very hard lane, and then he's in the enemy jungle and no vision, and he easily just combos down the Ash. You feel like there's no hope on their side, but King Zone, credit to them, able to calm down after that and say, 
we have a lot in our composition actually that can pull this team apart. They had Jace, unbelievable split pusher. They had LeBlanc, no TP, but also a fantastic split pusher. They pulled apart the map and Dom1 just kind of crumbled to pieces trying to deal with those multiple lane pushes. And unfortunately for them, Kingzone looked like a much better team tonight. And it's now a four game losing streak for Dom1 Gaming. You look at their results. They beat Gen.G at the start of the season when they were out of form, they beat KT. Well, so currently right down there with Jyn Air. Their losses are Griffin, SKT, Sandbox. So, okay, can kind of understand those. Uh. Nice little wave to the camera there from Cuz. But now they've lost 2-0 to Kingza and the manner in which they've lost those four games has had a lot of repeatable mistakes. Noggery's mental going topside and compounding the bad play around the LeBlanc to hand over.